Hi, I'm Craig Sigal, the mental toughness trainer for youth sports. I'm here to tell you how to get over high school sports injuries with a case study of mine. Nancy was a strong and aggressive volleyball player, and she loved the competition of big tournaments. She started playing at age 12, and her coaches knew right away that they had something special in her. On one night during a game, she dove for a save, and she injured her ankle. And as she stood up, she found she could not stand on her foot. And with tears streaming down her face, she was helped off the court. Now, having always been tough as nails, she thought she'd be back within a few weeks. But as it turned out, she ended up missing the rest of the season. As the reality of her situation sunk in, her spirits really took a big dive. And for the first time in her life, Nancy started feeling fear and doubt in the back of her mind constantly. She'd always taken for granted that she was superior to all her competitors, and she felt assured she had a future playing on a college team. Now she wasn't so sure. See, she put a lot of stock in her identity as a top-notch volleyball player. And having it literally disappear overnight was shocking and traumatic. She was frustrated she couldn't play and worried if she'd ever be able to come back at all. Parents, this is perfectly normal from this type of injury or experience. You know, at a time when most kids are struggling to get to know who they really are, playing sports fulfills multiple emotional needs. It's how they fit in. It's how they develop their own self-efficacy, and they form their perception of worth as a person. After months of painful rehab, Nancy was finally physically ready to play, but something was still holding her back. She knew the fear wasn't rational because she had completely healed. The doctor said she was fine. And she was a gifted athlete and knew exactly what she was supposed to do tactically, like the back of her hand. But as she explained to her coach, she now had a fear that she just couldn't shake. And in practice, her coach noticed the difference too. Instead of brushing it off and telling her to just put it out of her mind, her coach really listened to her and ended up sending her to me first thing work, we worked on was her focus or her dominant thoughts. She, she had spent the last half year thinking about her ankle and her rehab and wondering if she could ever play the same as she used to. Hundreds of doubting thoughts over a period of time, it starts to condition your mind. And I knew we had to reverse that before doing anything else. I had her go back to the reasons why she started playing volleyball in the first place. And we came up with a mantra she could repeat over and over that corrected her focus. The next step was to help her release all those stored up difficult emotions that were resultant from her injury and the setback to her career. You know, telling yourself simply to just let it go would not cut it. The work has to be done at a cellular level where the emotions literally get stuck. This is why we use guided visualizations in our training, and it worked wonders for her. She told me how light and free she felt afterwards. By working to clear her mental interference and teaching her an effective mental rehearsal process to literally see herself achieving her goals, she told me that she felt like she had pushed the reset button in her mind. She gradually began to trust her ankle and her body again, and she went on to a stellar season. A year later, realizing her dream of playing college ball, she told me that the lessons she had learned from using her mind to come back in volleyball and her ankle had helped her in bouncing back from a lost relationship. She was so excited about all this that she was now teaching other players the tools she learned for herself, and her coach had called her out in front of her teammates for that leadership. She became very popular in school and on the team as a, as a result of all this. And having worked with hundreds of kids and adults in person and through our online Mental Toughness Academy, I've found that all athletes experience major difficulties like this. Fears, doubts, and setbacks in their sport. And how they come through it all, or not, has far-reaching lifelong effects on all aspects of their life. Doubt, worry, fear, they don't just stay locked in the sports arena, they creep into all areas of our lives. And it's crucial to address these fears and setbacks as soon as possible so they don't become lifelong issues that, that hold your athlete back in other areas of their life. Go to sportsmentaltoughness.com to get your free video training and guided visualization MP3 on how to perform under pressure. I'm Craig Sigal, the Mental Toughness Trainer.